In the world of military aviation, there are few aircraft as iconic as the F-15 Eagle. Designed in the 1970s, the Eagle quickly earned a reputation as one of the world's most capable fighters, with a formidable combination of speed, agility, and firepower. However, in recent years, a new challenger has emerged, the F-16XL. This heavily armed variant of the venerable F-16 Fighting Falcon has quickly gained a reputation as one of the most lethal and effective fighter aircraft in the world. At first glance, the F-15 of May seem like the clear winner in a head-to-head -head matchup. With its twin engines and larger size, the Eagle has a distinct advantage in terms of speed, range, and payload capacity. But the F-16XL has a few tricks up its sleeve. With advanced avionics, a highly maneuverable airframe, and an array of sophisticated weapons systems, the F-16XL is a true force to be reckoned with. In fact, in simulated dogfights between the F-15 and F-16XL, the latter has emerged as the dominant aircraft. Its superior maneuverability and advanced weapon systems have allowed it to outmaneuver and outgun the F-15 in a variety of scenarios. Of course, the ultimate winner in any hypothetical matchup between these two aircraft would depend on a wide variety of factors, including pilot skill, tactics, and mission objectives. But there is no denying that the F-16XL has quickly established itself as a formidable opponent to the iconic F-15 Eagle. For more than 40 years, the F-16 Fighting Falcon has served as the backbone of the U.S. Air Force's fighter fleet, but one year before the first F-16 entered service, the team behind its development had already developed a better F-16, in the F-16XL. The fighter was so capable, in fact, that it went from being nothing more than a technology demonstrator to serving as legitimate competition for the venerable F-15E in the Air Force's advanced tactical fighter program. Ultimately, it would lose out to the F-15E based on production cost and redundancy of systems, but many still contend that the F-16XL was actually the better platform. In 1977, some three years after the first F-16 took to the skies and one year before it would enter service, its designer began work on what would come to be called the F-16 Scamp, or the supersonic cruise and maneuver prototype. The effort wasn't about fielding another production fighter General Dynamics had no intention of trying to sell Scamp once it was complete. Instead, the entire premise behind the program was to quickly field a platform they could use to test the concept behind supersonic cruising, or as we've come to call it today, supercruising. While that may sound like a capability found only on Transformers or Harleys so expensive only lawyers can buy them, the idea behind supercruising was simple, even if its execution was complex. Modern fighters like the F-16 all come equipped with afterburners they can use to dramatically increase the amount of thrust their engine produces, but it comes at a serious cost. Using the afterburner to break the sound barrier and then sustain that speed depletes an aircraft's fuel very quickly, but if a jet could kill the afterburner at supersonic speeds and still maintain them, it would mean covering more ground at high speed, while still having enough fuel left over for a fight and the return trip home. In order to accomplish their goal, the F-16 design would require a pretty thorough revamp. First, the wings were modified to incorporate a cranked arrow wing shape, creating 25% more lift while allowing for effective control at both high and low speeds. Working in conjunction with NASA, engineer Harry Hilliker, the same man responsible for the original F-16 design, experimented repeatedly with slightly different iterations of the wings until they came to a version they referred to as Model 400. This new wing design, which saw a 50-degree angle near the root of the wing for supersonic performance and a 70-degree angle where the wings extended for subsonic handling, offered more than double the surface area of the F-16's wings. Incredibly, Hilliker and his team were able to manage that without any increase in drag on the airframe thanks to more than 3,600 hours of wind tunnel testing. This new design wasn't necessarily practical, with all moving wingtips and an all moving vertical tail meant for control that performed poorly at low speeds. The wing design also didn't allow for any hardpoints to mount bombs or missiles. However, impractical as it may have been for a tactical fighter, the new wing design led to a significant increase in fuel range and that increase could be further bolstered by leveraging the massive amount of internal space these new wings offered. While the F-15 Eagle remains a highly respected fighter aircraft and has proven its capabilities in combat operations around the world, the emergence of the F-16XL has certainly shaken up the military aviation world. 
With its advanced avionics, highly maneuverable airframe, and sophisticated weapons systems, the F-16XL has proven to be a highly effective fighter aircraft, capable of dominating in simulated dogfights against even the most capable opponents. Of course, there are many factors that contribute to the success of any fighter aircraft, and the F-15 and F-16XL both have their strengths and weaknesses. But there is no denying that the F-16XL has established itself as a serious contender in the world of military aviation. Looking to the future, it is clear that the competition between these two aircraft, as well as other advanced fighters, will continue to push the boundaries of what is possible in terms of speed, maneuverability, and lethality. And while the F-15th of May have once been the undisputed king of the skies, the emergence of the F-16XL has shown that there is always room for innovation and improvement in the world of military aviation.